Good morning, Central. Thursday morning. Great day to start together. I'm glad that you're here, and I hope you're glad you're here, too. Hope you're glad that the other people who you see are here, are watching together with you this morning. So sign in and say hi to them. Would you do that? And then share this post with somebody, and let's get this day off to a good start. And I want you to do something a little different this morning. I want you to think, what is the worst thing you've ever done? I'm serious, the most evil, rebellious, heartless, godless action that you have ever engaged in. All right, got it in mind? Okay, type that in the comments section here. What? You don't want to share your worst ever horrible sin with whoever might be on Facebook here this morning? Um, no. Well, what about a lesser thing? Would you be willing to share some simpler, thoughtless action that you've done? Something that isn't, by comparison, so bad? Would you type that in? That's a lot more likely, isn't it? And why is that? Here's why. We tend to categorize sin. We tend to rationalize that some things we know to be wrong, even though we know it's wrong, are small and insignificant. And on the other hand, there are some things that are pretty big in our thinking out, uh, out there, aren't there? You know, the really big sins, murder, treason, substituting beets for chocolate, I just added that last one. The fact is, we tend to excuse those lesser things. James would like to point us another direction this morning. James chapter 2, verse 10, listen to what he says. But whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not commit murder. <coughs> If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. I want you to notice here, James does not say sin is sin, all sin is just the same. Look closely in this text. James says, Breaking one part of God's law makes you accountable for all of it. There are actually several places in Scripture that say not all sin is just the same. Jesus said there is an unforgivable sin, different than all others. Jesus said to Pilate that the ones who had turned him over to Pilate were guilty of a greater sin. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6 that committing fornication is different from all other sins. At the end of 1 John, John speaks of a sin that does not lead to death. The Old Testament law spells out specific punishments for specific sins. Some of those are really simple. If you steal, you pay it back with another 20% for stealing. If you break someone's tooth, then your tooth gets broken. But then there are others where the punishment is to be stoned to death. So what's the difference? Different sins. James's point here isn't that all sin affects us the same. His point is that all sin, no matter what part of the law you don't break, no matter how simple it might seem, all sin makes you a lawbreaker, period. So you can keep all 613 commands of the Old Testament, but the moment that you break one, you're guilty of the whole law. You have become a lawbreaker. Isn't trying to live by law great? Well, thankfully, there is a different law at play here under Jesus. There's this thing that James calls the law of liberty. What's that? I would say it's the new way under Jesus that sets us free from the law of sin and death. Rather than being condemned for breaking just one command, we can receive mercy. Under the law of liberty, God forgives us sets us free. That's good news today. So, mercy, he says, triumphs over judgment. We're glad for that because that's what God has shown to us. He doesn't give us what we deserve. That's called mercy. Grace is even another step further, but today I'm going to thank God for his mercy. 
Psalm 103 verse 10 says, He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our offenses. God's mercy towards us triumphs over the judgment we deserve for our sins against Him. That by itself is a reason for you and me to have a good day today. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Other people should be glad for that. They should be glad for it because we people who have been shown mercy are the very people who should turn around and show mercy to others. Mercy triumphs over judgment in our relationships with other people too. The offenses of others against me actually sound petty when I look at them compared to my offenses against God. The people around me should be glad that mercy triumphs over judgment because I should be showing them mercy, just like I have been shown mercy. Did you notice how James added, judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy? The simple and obvious outcome of being a person who has been shown mercy is that you'll do the same for someone else. I'm sure that you can name someone who doesn't deserve for you to show him or her mercy. I can. When I look in the mirror, I can name someone I'm sure doesn't deserve it. Thankfully, mercy triumphs over judgment. Let's pray. Father, today for your mercy, thank you. Thank you that you have not dealt with us according to the way our sins deserve. For not giving us what we deserve. So often, Lord, we claw away at life, saying we should get what we deserve, when deep down we really know that's not what we want. We need your mercy. And Father, as those who freely receive that from you, I pray we will be people who freely show it to others. Help us today to be in our attitude, in our thinking, and Lord, in our words and actions towards others, those who show mercy. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you'll find somebody today to whom you can show mercy, who needs it shown to them. And I hope that you'll be back tomorrow morning when Brian Roder will say good morning, Central. And till then, God bless you. Have a great day.